Hello, Provo City residents. I am Superintendent Dow from the Provo City School District. Today is Friday, April 19th. It is my pleasure to give you an update about the things that we are working on as a school district. One of the first things that I want to talk about is uh, Spencer Cox, um, our governor, as well as um, high levels of the Utah School Boards Association, as well as the Superintendents Association have really been promoting the concept of the Dignity Index. If you haven't, uh, if you don't know what this is, I would urge you to research it. It really is about how do we communicate and disagree better and disagree in a respectful and civil way um, without being accusatory, with just really asking questions and saying, tell me more about that and really presuming positive intent from others and seeking to come to consensus. Consensus does not mean that we agree. Consensus means that we're understanding what the will of the majority is and that we're willing to accept that decision and support and move on with that. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to that. We have so many individuals who ask us questions and who always do so with um, the utmost professionalism and dignity and they're really following the principles of that. And I would just urge you to think about that as we model that um, behavior, particularly going into an election season and how are we communicating with others? Um, and, and think about that as you're voting for individuals. Um, are we voting for individuals that support that kind of, um, that dignity and, and treating other people with respect and humanity? So just wanted to uh, highlight that. I really appreciate Governor Cox's work in that, um, and especially as we are at all levels of government are dealing with hard conversations and things that we have to have and we want to make sure that we are maintaining that respect for one another. First and foremost, uh, we did have a preliminary budget discussion at our last school board meeting on Tuesday. We will continue to have those uh, discussions. Devin Daly, our business administrator, did an exceptional job of talking about our total number of students. We do have our projected enrollment, what that actually looks like and how much money we're actually awarded per student. It's important to note that we are awarded just under $5,000 per student. Our enrollment has dropped as a district. Um, and so that, that is why you are seeing a decrease in the number of teachers that um, uh, at some of our schools where that enrollment is dropping. The board also talked about uh, pretty extensively some preliminary boundary discussions. There were no decisions that were made, but looking at do we need to really examine how we can utilize our taxpayer dollars and our buildings more efficiently? What does that look like and, and what would a conversation like that be? And so um, I urge you to tune in to our April 30th board meeting. More discussion will come as a result of that. Um, and there are some very specific rules uh, that have to be followed that have been set up by the legislature. So any decision that is made um, by the school board to move forward with something like that would require extensive communication. There's very specific guidelines about what that communication has to look like and what those timelines have to be and opportunities for input, where and when those have to be, how much notice has to be given. And we will be very transparent in our communication of that. So we just wanna give you a heads up um, about those things. We did uh, approve the student board member policy and uh, we do have a new policy about uh, devices on campuses that are usually referred to as micro mi mobility vehicles, such as electric assisted bicycles or electric scooters. Um, we want to make sure that our campuses are safe. So there is a policy that is online available for your review. Um, so we would love to have any feedback that you have for that. I also uh, had the opportunity um, to listen to Principal Snow from Spring Creek Elementary give an overview at the last board meeting about all of the great success that is happening at Spring Creek. Their specific attention that, that they're paying to our, our multilingual learners and the specific strategies that they're implementing and the results that they're having. I think sometimes we talk a lot about the strategies and what we really need to know is what are our outcomes. And so Principal Snow shared some really great growth data to show um, how much progress our teachers are making with students. When you have those growth rates, it means that our students are actually making more than a year's worth of growth uh, in a given year. And that's pretty phenomenal um, at a Title I school. So just a big shout out to Spring Creek Elementary, to their teachers and their 
um, and their uh, entire staff because it takes every single one of them to make that happen. We also want to let you know that Principal Furman at Wasatch Elementary, I think those that are in Wasatch's boundaries know that he has decided to accept an assignment in a different district. We are very sad to see Principal Furman go. If you watch him with students, he always keeps kids at the forefront of everything that he does, um, but we wish him the very best. So Ruth Ann Snow, who had been assigned to come to the district office as a literacy specialist, will be um, the new principal at Wasatch Elementary beginning in the 2024-2025 school year. Principal Furman will be finishing out the rest of the school year and then Principal Snow uh, will begin there uh, July 1st. So uh, we are excited to have Principal Snow at Wasatch. She has a long history there and just her talents will um, be greatly appreciated. Currently, we have a Camp Big Spring survey that is out asking for parent feedback, um, really about what we want the program, what our parents want this program to look like. Um, we know sometimes we get a lot of uh, feedback that we're not asking parents for um, what they need, but we really do want to know what the needs and desires are of our parents when it comes to Camp Big Springs so that we know how to move forward in a more permanent kind of way and what um, things that we want to provide our fifth graders at Camp Big Springs. So please look forward to that. That survey will be open until April 30th. I also want to give a shout out to Provost Elementary. I just love seeing all of the music that takes place at Provost. I got to go into Kylie Decker's music class. Um, they were doing bucket drums just to see the excitement of the students and how much work is put forth in um, making those programs so accessible to our students. Uh, I also got to go into Haley Holland's fourth grade science class, just how engaging it was. Um, they were talking about waves and energy and building vocabulary. Uh, it was pretty incredible. So just to see all of that taking place, it's just a real pleasure. And I was in there for probably 40 minutes. Um, and so watching that sustained lesson, the positive feedback, the interactions, the participation um, was, was really incredible. So really a uh, big shout out to uh, Haley Holland. Um, this week's podcast is with three of our board members, board president Rebecca Nielsen, uh, board member Terry McCabe, and board member Meg Van Wagnen as we talk about the National School Boards Association Conference, um, different things that people took away from that, um, and how we can better work as a district leadership team and a board to ensure that we are providing the best education for our students. Uh, this week, uh, we met with uh, the Utah State Board of Education, so this would be with the state superintendent, Sid Dixon, um, several of the deputy superintendents, and um, going through many of the education bills and what this means for our public schools. We have policies that have to be written and implemented um, and looking at how we can ensure that we are in compliance with these various things. So that was very helpful and to brainstorm with other superintendents about ideas about what that might look like. Um, some of these um, you know, requirements have costs that are associated with it that we have to now allocate as a district, such as um, our school safety bills. These are obviously very important things, but those requirements are going to um, ask us to invest uh, money into that. And so we're we're looking at that as we're budgeting our priorities for the coming year. So that'll all be part of our discussion at our April 30th board meeting as we look at um, what our student enrollment is, what money we're receiving from the legislature and uh, for, for each student, what um, that looks like in terms of teach overall teachers and how we're going to compensate our teachers and employees in that process and the supports that we're putting in place. So lots of really important discussions happening. I know that most people don't wanna sit and watch a board meeting, but it is helpful as they are recorded that you can then go in and watch the segments of that board meeting that really address concerns or questions that you may have. Um, and so that can be very helpful. And as you're trying to understand what the budget priorities are and um, how our money at taxpayer dollars are being spent. Um, this next week is Administrative Assistance Appreciation Week. I would urge each of you, if you have students in schools, to just say thank you to the head administrative assistants and all those who um, support our teachers and our principals 
in our schools in our district office. Um, they are lifesavers and they are often nurses. They are they often make phone calls to parents. They're helping um, get your kid down to the office so you can check them out. All of those things that they help us with day in and day out. They help us with our finances and our budgeting and all of the things that they do. Um, and so just giving them a great big appreciation. I know they would uh, love to feel um, seen and heard and valued. Um, also just want to let you know that our steering committee meeting for a strategic plan will be on Wednesday evening. Um, our district leadership team has been working on uh, goals and strategies and so that will be taken to the steering committee so that they can provide feedback and then to the Board of Education on April 30th so that they can give some additional directives about um, the direction that we need to go as a district as we finalize our strategic plan. We are also working with our um, two employee associations as we budget and negotiate salaries for the coming year. So um, stay tuned for that information that will be coming up in future board meetings. And then we had an opportunity to attend our partnership dinner with BYU. So grateful for BYU's emphasis on public education as being a cornerstone, a foundation, if you will, of our democratic society. Those who seek to destroy or humiliate or denigrate public education, it really does attack the very fiber of our democratic society. So grateful for that partnership with them and their understanding of the role that public education plays in creating an educated society that can make informed decisions and, and select leaders and, and support policies that that benefit our great nation. Uh, it's one of the one of the unique things about our country is that our education system really is run by a board of education and that we really do value um, an educational system that creates informed citizens. Um, we also have a farewell tour of Dixon Middle School. No matter where you live, you've probably been to Dixon at some point in time in Provo. We would love to have you there. It's at six o'clock p.m. Uh, on April 20, Monday, April 29th. So we would love to see you there. We know many of you went to Dixon or you've had children who've gone to Dixon or your grandparents went to Dixon or there's just a lot of memories um, there. So we'd love to have you uh, walk through the building um, as that school will start to pack up and get ready for their relocation to Shoreline Middle School. Um, with that, I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, we'll update you again next Friday with more great information from Provo City School District. Bye now.